So in the previous videos, I have explained forecasting models which were univariate models. So there could be actually two types of models, univariate and multivariate. The univariate models, they actually use data of only one time series. So we'll be using historical data or past data of the main variable itself to forecast the future. Those are the univariate models. And in multivariate models, we will include other variables which can explain our main main variable, main dependent variable, okay? So we can call the other variables explanatory or independent variables, and then we have the main dependent variable. So for instance here, you know, we can say that the freight rate is a function of NB and CI. So we say freight rate is a function of new building orders. So the more ships that come in into the market that will increase the supply and normally with the supply, the freight rates are likely to go down, right? And then China import, iron ore import. So here, this is an example of demand. So the more the demand, the higher will be the freight rate, right? And if we form this in a multiple regression equation format, then we will actually have something like this, okay? So what we have, this is our main dependent variable, the freight rate that we are trying to forecast, and this is our intercept. It simply means that the starting point of the freight rate, regardless of whatever supply or demand we have, we will still have some freight rate, right? When we move something, it will not be for free. So that's the alpha, the intercept, the starting point. And then we have beta one, that is the coefficient for new building order. So for one unit more new building, so for one more ship new order, how much will the freight rate decrease or increase, whatever happens? Likely to decrease, but whatever happens. And then beta two is the coefficient of CIT, that is the demand, China, uh, China import demand. So for one unit increase in import, China iron ore import, what will happen to the freight rate? How much will it increase? So that's what we will get from the beta two. And the rest of the part, the error term. So doesn't matter how well is our model, most likely still some level of variation in our freight rate cannot be explained by these two variables because there are many variables that affects the freight rate. And normally we will not have data of all those variables and it is not really possible to capture everything. So our model has some explanatory power, but it cannot explain it 100%. So the person that it cannot explain will be accounted in the error term, okay? So now let's have a look how it works in Excel. So now, I am going to use these three variables, these two variables that I kept hidden when I was doing the univariate models, but now I unhide them so I can use them again. And I hide the univariate models in details, but I only kept the errors so that I can see their MEP level in the end, okay? So now our plan is that we will forecast these iron award freight rates using these two variables as explanatory variables. Okay, and to do that, let's see how we do that. We will need something called data analysis, which is here. Okay, so some of you may not have it if you do not have it. So you can do that by using the add-on in Excel, but I'm, not, I'm going to show that in another video. For now, let's go to data analysis. So what we are actually going to do, you can see actually we can do quite a lot of things with data analysis here, but now what are we going to do is we are going to do regression and then I'm going to click OK. So normally we put the dependent variable in Y and we put the independent variables in X. So I'm going to select my Y variable, okay, that is this variable. I will put up to this point, okay, my training sample period. And then we are going to put the input variables, the X, and again, I'm going to do it up to the training sample period. And then, okay, and then I will say label, yeah, marked, because I included the labels when I selected it. And then where do you want your output? You want it in a new arc, new worksheet, new, wor new workbook, or you can put output range. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select some output range and I'm going to put uh, my output range here. So let's say I'm going to put it actually here, okay? 
and if you want a lot of other things you can have for like normal probability plot residual plots all those things so there are some assumptions to linear regression models but we will cover that in another video actually you will find a link on top and but now we, i'm not going to talk about all these things about the assumptions of residual plots and all these things but i'm just going to run this with click ok so that i get the parameters here and again see our uh, regression model video just to have clear idea of what all these things means we explain them very clearly in our regression model video but now for now what i am interested in is these values the coefficients okay. so the first one is the intercept that is the starting freight rate and then for one unit increase in my new building order how much is my freight rate increasing or decreasing we see that it will be decreasing by 0 0.006 and then for my China iron worry demand how is my freight rate going to be affected so that's what we see here okay so it is like 0 0.00017 okay it will decrease for one unit increase in demand it will decrease actually with demand increase it was supposed to increase the freight rate but for some reason we see that it decreases but anyway and with R square we see actually our model performance uh, explanatory power is pretty bad it, it can explain only 0.01% of the variation in our dependent variable but that's really bad but anyway I'm just going to ignore all these things just to show you how should we do forecast with multiple linear regression and to do that we will actually need only these coefficients okay so these are the most important things and to do that so I'm here again I will start from the first one so I, I will first write uh, regression and then equal to so our equation will be this one so I'm going to copy this in my Excel okay so when we're doing the regression so we have the alpha that is our intercept and that is this value here the intercept and then we put a plus then we need beta so this is our beta beta 1 this is for the new building contract we multiply this with the observed value for the same period so this will be this one here okay and then plus the beta 2 which is here okay by the way we actually have to fix these values so r23 should be fixed okay then r24 should also be fixed but this beta 6 can vary and this one r25 should also be fixed and it will be multiplied with the observed value of the variable iron worry for the period which is here okay and then enter so this is actually my forecast value using regression so my real for value was 9.75 and using this regression model these parameters we get 8.11 and now i'll just double click and I will have all the values here so that's it actually so now here one one tricky part could be that you know for the out sample period if you look here you see that we actually need the values of the explanatory variables to forecast the dependent variable we are not using the very values of the dependent variable but we need some values of the explanatory variable to explain the forecast to to get the forecast okay there are some models where we could use previous values of the explanatory variables as well to make a forecast. Uh, those models are normally the vector autoregressive models, but I'm not going to cover them now, but in another video, I'll, in a later video, I will cover that. We can assume that maybe we will have this information in our hand, okay? And we could use them to forecast this. And other way could be actually to forecast these variables using exponential smoothing or halt winters model. So we would use that we would forecast first the explanatory variables and use those forecasted values to forecast the dependent variable using regression. So that could be another way, but I'm not going to show that now. So if you're interested, please see our previous videos on Hall Winders Matter method or exponential smoothing, and then you could forecast these values and use them to forecast the dependent variable using regression. Okay, so I'm just leaving it like this for now. I will quickly calculate the forecast accuracy MAPE just to see how is it how, how is the regression performing error R for regression REG so now we start with absolute absolute the real value 
minus my regression forecasted value okay divided by by my actual value and this is my percentage of error i will just move it like this and then we go down and then i can just drag this part here i have to remove these ones okay so here we can see our forecast performance actually i have to move it to the top Okay, and same here, I have to move it up to the top, include all of them. And this one is fine, considering only the last ones. Okay, so now we see that our regression model performs pretty poor. And this sometimes, this actually proves that sometimes, even if you have some explanatory variables, doesn't mean that your forecast will be better. Sometimes the univariate models can do much better as we can already see here, you know. So it, it performs much poorer than our, even the naive forecast model, okay. And sometimes these regression models, they can be used if, if the model was very good with very high explanatory, explanatory power, actually then it could be sometimes useful like just to change some parameters here. So let's say if we had ordered few more ships here, what will be the freight rate? And then you'd see the freight rate, how it changed here, okay? So these kind of things, you know, it's very useful uh, when you have a good model with high explanatory power, but not in this case. The regression is forced in this case. In this case, actually, what we see, the best model, I think, is the hard winters model. Yeah, this one, I think, works the best. In the next video, I will actually plot all this MAP and and all these forecasted values and i will just discuss briefly how should we present in papers okay when we're doing a research paper or something like that how should we present these tables and figures nicely